Hey guys, um, hope you all are doing well. Um, I, well, if you saw yesterday's video, it was mind-blowing to me how God just moved in a different direction. Uh, we talked, I started by talking about what I was learning in quarantine and uh, uh, trusting God and it, and it ended up in a totally different place um, with, with freedom from uh, different things that held us back for years, things that we haven't told our family and our friends. And I was thinking about this last night, and something came to me. A few weeks ago, I was talking about the difference between moving things and kicking things um, and breaking things. Um, because um, you can't move things and kick things uh, metaphorically because you can, when you move something or kick something out of the way, you could set it to rights. But when you break something, um, it's broken. You can't put it back together. And God said that's what he wants. Um, and a physical um, way of showing this is, now I don't want you to break anything in your house, but the way, because I'm a really illustrative sermon kind of person, so I like to show people, people instead of telling people. I like to tell stories instead of, you know, uh, using scripture, although the story always has a basis in the scripture, but just for things to come alive, I like to um, do, do things in such strange ways. And God gave me this. Um, God gave me this way. So if you want to do this, uh, this is the way God gave me. Write down, first of all, watch yesterday's video. Um, it's the one right above here. And after you finish watching it, it's, it's about 22 minutes long. Write down that thing that you've been running from, that thing that you've been scared of, that thing that had, has, had you bound for several years. Get a piece of paper, write it down. Uh, it could be a list of things, it could be one thing, it could be two things. It could be something your family already knows about, or it could be something that your friends have no idea about. Just write down that thing that has been plaguing you. Um, it could be fear, it could be whatever, it could be a whole list. Write down that thing, that sin, that proclivity, that whatever, write it down. I'll give you some time to do that. After you write it down, um, write it down in big, bold letters. And after you write it down, rip it up. R rip the piece of paper right up and throw it in the gar garbage. And then after you throw it in the garbage, give him a praise for freeing you from it.
and even and if you want to get more creative um the, the lord showed me um the lord showed me we've been married to things that we ought not to be married to for so long he showed this to me as a marriage some things we've been married to uh we've been connected to we've been soul tied with for so long don't worry fear that we have just carried it with us and he said another creative way of doing it instead of just writing it down and ripping it up is to write down i'm divorcing and then put what it is and then write it down and then and then rip it up so you would say rachel esdale is divorcing a fear let's say and then i would i would write that down as a divorce decree and worship at if as if it's gone and if that thing creeps up again whatever it is later on tonight or whatever you just say i've divorced you you're not you you you're not with me anymore you're not my husband anymore you're not my wife anymore we're not we're, we're not bed, bedfellows and because we're divorced i'm not sleeping with you anymore because a lot of us have slept with things been bedfellows with things been partners with things um for too for too long and those things have been keeping us for our, from our destiny have been have been keeping us from having fulfilling marriages and fulfilling relationships and fulfilling lives um i'm i'm single but but i'm seeing husbands and wives going to bed with with uh three people instead of one they're going to bed with their husband but they're also going to bed with fear and with worry because those things attached itself to them at a young age let me tell you a story to um sit um is um explain what i mean mary was 12 years old and at the age of 12 years old mary's mother left her after her mother left her she felt so abandoned her mother didn't come back didn't call didn't do anything so all through mary's life she she was so afraid of being abandoned that she became very clean clean and held on to too tight to those around her um to the point where nobody wanted to be her friend because once you were her friend she would hang on to you so tight when mary met her husband robert he he loved her so much uh, that that she thought this would be it i'm married now oh he's never going to leave me he loves me and that's it so mary and and robert had three kids and and as those kids grew up she was so afraid so that they were she was afraid that she wasn't good enough 
to be loved. So she went overboard as a mom every time the school would have a bake sale, she would have to be the best like baker. She would have to, uh, she went overboard to uh, show up for her kids, not just show up for her kids like a regular parent. Um, if her kids had a bake sale, she had to bake a whole bunch of stuff and show the other person up. Um, so that her kids would say, wow, mom, we love you. So she did all this stuff because she didn't want to be like a bad mom. And when her kids got older, um, abandoned by them. So she worked so hard not to be abandoned by her kids and by her husband, Robert, um, that that her cling, her clingy nature and her and her ability to go over the top with everything was causing her kids and her husband to feel suffocated so every time robert would go out um she she would give him the third degree what, where are you going what you're doing who did you see and blah, 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 blah. It got to the point where Robert couldn't breathe because his wife was always texting him and checking up on him. It wasn't anything that he did, but it was her abandonment issues from her mom that was causing this because she thought if my mom couldn't love me, and my mom abandoned me. I guess I'm not worth being loved. Everybody will leave me. And so she held on so tight to her husband and her children. And when her children became teenagers, they, could, they couldn't go to friend houses. They would get the third degree when they were five minutes late. Why were you five minutes late? Blah, 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 blah. And she was not a very pleasant person to be around. And so she, she, heard, um, she heard my message from yesterday about, um, about, things that she was hiding from her family and friends. And and she'd been married to her husband, Robert, for 20 years and never told him that her mother abandoned her, never told him the hurt and uh, disappointment and abandonment and rejects, rejects it rejection, sorry, she felt by her mother. She never told him that. So when she heard my video from yesterday, she thought, I need to tell Robert what was going on. And when she told Robert what was going on, and then he understood. And she told her 19-year-old daughter, Debbie, what was going on. She told her 15-year-old son what was going on. And they, and they all em empathized with her. And they're like, Mom, we won't leave you, but you need to give us some room. We're growing up and we need, we need to make our own mistakes. You need to trust us. And she's like, I know, but it's hard. And her son um, told her to do what I just told you to do. Uh, get a piece of paper. Write, write her abandonment issues with her mom down. 
write her her rejection issue down, write the fact that she was afraid that her children and husband would leave her, and she was afraid that she was a good enough mom. And she was like, I divorce abandonment issues. I divorce rejection. I divorce all of those issues she she had with her mom. So what happened was after she wrote it down, she tore it, she tore it up and she, she received peace from the Lord. And after that, um, when she, the abandonment issue that night when she was asleep beside Robert came to her. Like the devil said, everybody will abandon you. Everybody will leave you. You have, you have to be the perfect mom. You have to be over the top of your children. And you know what she said? She said, I divorced you rejection. I divorce you, abandonment. We will not be married anymore. I'm not 12 years old anymore. She's like a 42 and I am not that scared little girl anymore. She's like, I'm a child of God. And from, from that day forward, she went to sleep and it would still crop up every now and then. But ever since that last, ever since that first time, after she tore the paper up, the voice got smaller and smaller because she knew how to defeat it. See, when you know how to defeat something, it cannot have a hold of you. And when you bring something to light, it doesn't have power on you, uh, over you anymore. Darkness loves to hide stuff. Light exposes stuff and heals stuff. So writing whatever your issue is down will expose it and heal it. And ripping it up on the piece of paper will give you a physical, um, not reminder, a physical way of saying, I have this issue, but it's no more. And, and you will see that eventually that issue will become smaller and smaller and smaller because you've given light to it. Darkness lets things fester and grow while light exposes them and shrinks them. I'm talking about issues. I'm talking about control issues, abandonment issues, um, whatever issues you have, light can shrink the issue, whereas darkness lets it grow. Because when you leave issues in your own mind, they can grow because it's only you uh, talking about the issue, meditating over the issue, worrying about the issue. But if you bring light to it, and other, if you see it in the light, you can, it's exposed. And when it's exposed, it can be destroyed. And also when you bring light to an issue, you can actually also get help with it. You can actually also get freed from it. And that's what the Lord wants from us today. Um, me included, just to get free from a whole bunch of stuff that's been holding us back for years. A whole bunch of self-esteem stuff, 
a whole bunch of waste stuff. He wants us to not hide anymore. He wants us to be transparent. He wants us to be freed from whatever has us bound. And he's, he's going to help us with our freedom. He won't do it for us, but he'll help us with it. He'll bring people alongside us that can help us with it. Um, he will, he will send his word, send the proper scriptures. And as I said before, send the proper people into your life to help you deal with that issue. He so wants you to be free, beloved. He so wants you to be whole, whole. He longs for, he longs more than anything for you to be whole in mind, body, and spirit. Um, he wants you to just live the life that he's called you to live. A life of peace, a life of joy, not a life free from pain. Pain will come, but it's how you process and deal with the pain. Pain and challenges will come. This life won't be without it. But it's how you deal with it, how you process it. Do you take them as lessons to propel you? Or do you take them as barriers to stop you? If your pain is a barrier and it will st stop you, that is not what God wants for you. God wants your pain, everything you're going through, to be a lesson to propel you to, to your greater destiny and purpose. I pray that this sermon blessed you. Um, I'll see you later this week. Bye. Probably Thursday or Friday. I think I'll take a break tomorrow. That's if the Lord doesn't have anything pressing today to say. But how he's moving this week, who knows? You may see me tomorrow, you may not, but you will for sure see me on Sunday for Storm Top Sunday. But probably before then. I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you. He is for you. And amen. 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 Oh, 
I'll see you later. Bye.